Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one only true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the Spirit and power Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And uh, pretty much, man, this lesson is going to be titled as various topics. You know, I'm going to get on certain topics, you know, through the spirit. You know, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And uh, the first precept I'm going to start in is Proverbs 1 and 7. It says, The fear of the Lord. Khan, the fear of the Lord. Anytime you see Lord in caps, it's talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Gone. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. How is that? How is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge? Because when you first come into the truth, all right, you understand and know the uh, what a the protocol, in other words. You know the end result. When you first come into the truth, you learn about the Lord. You understand his purposes, his do's and don'ts. Right, you know and understand now that when you come into the truth, the do's and don'ts. All right, you fear the Lord, you know the end result, the punishment. You know, if you disobey the Lord, you know, if you if you you know go opposite to the to the gospel. All right, that's why you want to fear the Lord, because you know the end result of not fearing the Lord or rebelling against the Lord. You know the judgment. You know that there's going to be thermonuclear destruction brought here. All right, because two-thirds are going to be put to death, according to the scriptures, right? But you're trying to make it to be the elect. That's the whole point of why we're in the ministry. So we're separating ourselves from the ways of the world because we did that at one point in time in life. Again, a lot of us was athletes. A lot of us was rappers, singers. You know, we had talents in this world. You know, we thought that that's what it was about. We thought life was about being recognized, being the spotlight right being on tv being glamorous right we thought that that was the whole point in life being rich having billions of dollars right being like these rappers that you see on tv right but that's not the case that was not our mission to begin with all right the lord you know predestinated us you know and directed us into his path into his path where he chose it for us all right because again you like the elders say man this is this truth isn't about you. It's not about me. It's not about nobody. It's about Yahweh Bahashim Yahshai. That's who this truth is about. That's what this whole thing is about. So now that you come into the truth and you understand that you are to fear the Lord, you're gonna follow the instructions given. You're gonna keep the laws and statutes and commandments to the best of your ability, right? But you're mainly gonna have a faith through that. You know, you're gonna start fixing on yourself. You're going to start examining yourself. You're going to start putting your feelings and emotions aside, right? You're going to start changing through the spirit. Everything is going to change within you. You know, you're going to change so much that people that knew you once before, they see that you change. They even bring it to your attention like, hey, man, you change. You're not the same no more. You don't you don't party. You know, you don't you don't smoke anymore. You don't you don't you don't you don't. Have fun. You don't be in the streets like you used to. You know, you don't be. And if you were a, a, a Jake that grew up in the, in, 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 in the neighborhood, you know, around thugs and stuff, they're like, damn, what happened to you, nigga? You don't, you, ain't, you don't be on the block. You don't, you don't be doing this, doing that no more. What happened to you? You know, it's the Lord that changes you because the Lord sees you as an Israelite. He's seen that you have converted. He sees that you are becoming what he ordained you to be. Right? Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right? So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Because when you come into the truth, you understand the regulations that is given of Yahweh Bashimashai. And you know that you are to follow that regulation. Alright? It says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Calm. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because you got two-thirds of our people, they don't want to change. Alright? They believe being unrighteous is better than being righteous. They believe being wicked is more better than being good. You know, they want to be wicked. 
They don't they don't want to come to the truth. They don't want to seek the Lord. Oh, that's boring. Coming to the truth is boring. Why? Because you're not partying? Because you're not sell, selling drugs? Right? Because you're not fighting people. You're not beating people up. Right? You're not tattooing yourself anymore. You're not smoking and getting high. You're not sitting in the house playing video games, playing Madden all fucking day. You're not doing nothing but telling war stories about the time you didn't you didn't you didn't mug somebody, rob somebody. That's not that's not a good way to be. You're telling war stories in the past, the things that you've done, right? That's why the scriptures say, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They don't want to hear the good things. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear bad things. You know, and that's and that's what this society is built up. That's what our people love. They love hearing uh, 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 in other words, drama. They love hearing uh, things that's 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 horrifying. That's not horrifying, but that's that's crazy. Like, hey, that dude that you knew Snow got shot. They love to hear things like that. Oh, you hear what happened to this individual? They got shot. They got jumped. They got beat up. You know, people are amused with folly. In other words, they're they're amused with folly. So they don't want to hear the instructions of the Lord, man. Our people don't fear the Lord. Proverbs 8 and 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It's con. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, right? So, you know, if we're in the truth, we're not going to be around people that's worldly. Because we know that the things that they're embedded in is not beneficial to us, all right? It's not beneficial for you. You be around a person that's worldly, that's on just worldly shit all day. They're not trying to read the scriptures. They're not trying to, you know, better themselves. They're not trying to repent. They're not trying to seek the Lord. They just want to be embedded in the world. They just want to do as thou wilt. They just want to be a simple nigga in society. That's not a good individual to be around, right? Because it says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way. See, so when you come into the truth and you fear the Lord, you're going to come out of the ways of, of being wicked. You're going to come out of the ways of being in the world, right? Being worldly. Let's get some precepts on that really quick, you know? This is uh, Ephesians uh, 5, 4, I think it's 5 and 22, Salakia. It's Ephesians 4 and 22, Salakia. Ephesians 4 and 22. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, right? You put off the old man, right? You get rid of the old man, right? Because when you come into the truth, you got to put in, you got to put on the new man. You got to be, you got to be changed. You got to change your ways, man. Right? Because you can't come into the truth, the person who you were before you came into this thing. You, you was worldly at one time, right? You was embedded in the world, right? Now you coming into the truth, you got to throw that old man off. You got to come in as a new creature. You got to put off. The worldly, naive ways that you have learned growing up. Because now you got to learn everything all over again when you come to the truth. So now you got to put off the worldly things. But you got Israelite groups or Israelite individuals out there. When they come into the truth, they don't get rid of their worldly ways. They keep their worldly ways in the truth. And that's not how you're supposed to be. It says put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. So you're supposed to get rid of that, that, that old person who you were. This is, a, this is Ephesians 4 and 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Right? Because the old man has lust. The person you were before, they're wicked. You was wicked. You was naive. You know? That's why you can't bring that spirit in the truth. You can't. You know? This is why we fast. We pray. Because our flesh goes off. Our flesh has these, dece has these de deceitful lusts. Right? But when you're reading scriptures... And you're applying the scriptures to your spiritual walk. You're praying without ceasing, right? You're praying three times a day, right? You're meditating to the Lord. You're asking the Lord to increase you here, you know, strengthen you in the truth, strengthen you in the gospel, strengthen you in diligence, right? Praying for, praying for the Lord for humility, right? Praying to the Lord, asking the Lord to guide you in your spiritual walk, keep you on a, on a straight path, praying for other brothers, you know, praying for these brothers here, praying for the elders, Paul's Ray Milson, all the brothers. You know, keep the congregation stronger, grow stronger. There's many different things you can pray on, you know. And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost, always. Verse 23, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How are you going to be renewed in the spirit of your mind? You got to learn everything all over again. All the worldly lusts and all the worldly things that you've done in your past life, now that you're in the truth, 
you got to learn everything all over again. You got to start all over again. Yeah, you're a 21-year-old man to 30, 40, 50-year-old man, but now you got to learn everything all over again. You're a baby in the spirit, you know? You got to learn everything all over again. So you're in the spirit, you're a, you're a baby. If you've been in the truth for a month, two months, three months, up to eight years, nine years, you're still a baby in the truth. You're still a baby in the truth, man. You know, you, you got to learn and do everything all over again. That's what it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And how are you going to be renewed? The word, the washing of the word, man. The word is what cleanses you. That's how your mind's going to be renewed. The, the scriptures, applying the scriptures, right? The, the scriptures say in, uh, let me get that precept out. This is John 7 and 38. This is John 7 and 38. It says, he that believeth on me, con, he that believeth on me. That's why you have to apply these scriptures to your spiritual walk. The word is written at Yahweh Shai, Psalms 40 and 7, right? The word is written at Yahweh Shai. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. John 7 and 38, he that believeth on me as the scriptures have said. See, so this is why we apply the scriptures. This is why we use the scriptures. You know, you got people out there. They say, why are you always using a Bible? Why you can't just give me your own vain opinion? Hell, my opinion don't fucking matter. What I say don't matter. The scriptures is what matters. You know, a lot of people, a lot of Jakes out there, they don't want to hear the Bible. They want to hear our own opinion. Our own opinion doesn't fucking matter. The, the scriptures is what matters. What the Lord say is what we do. What the Lord regulates for us to do is what we're going to do. We fall in line with Yahweh Shai, man. You know? Our opinion doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't. It does not matter, man. John 7 and 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What's the belly? Your mind. The belly is your mind. All right? The belly is your mind. It says, and shall flow rivers of living water. The water is the word, the scriptures. The washing of water by the word, right? Uh, Ephesians 5 and 26, right? How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Psalms uh, 119 and 9. So the scriptures is what keeps our minds renewed. All right? The scriptures is what renews our mind. So let's go back to Proverbs 8 and 13. This is Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So now that we know that we are to hate evil, we're going to separate from that. We're going to draw ourselves away from that. We're going to repent. We're going to come and, and, and receive the the, the, the the true gospel, right? The true way to Yahweh And how are you going to be able to do that? Learning from his prophets. Learning from his men. All right? The Lord always had men set up. Camps always been set up. I said it many, many times. All right, the only way you're going to be able to seek the Lord, you as a Hebrew Israelite, a so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American, Indian, the only way you're going to be able to seek the Lord is through his prophets, through his men. The Lord always had men set up. The Lord always had men set up to follow. But not every single, but you got to understand, not every single man that you see is a man of the Lord. If he's not teaching the same doctrine as Great Mill Song, right, he's not teaching the same exact doctrine. He's not teaching that the MOTB is the seat to the hip. If he's not teaching that, don't watch that individual. If he's teaching that it's, the MOTB is spiritual, don't watch that individual. If he's teaching that you to wear fringes everywhere you go 24-7, don't watch that individual because he's being overrighteous. You got to know and understand who has the truth and who doesn't. You'll, you'll, get, you'll see it. You know, you will see it. The Lord will have you see it through the Spirit. You know? This is Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way in the fourth mouth do I hate. The Lord hates those things. This is why you got to be humble. This is why you got to fear the Lord. You got to be humble. Because if you're not humble, it will put you in a bad situation, man. You want to be humble. The pride demon is, is, is very rampant amongst Israel, man. The pride demon, you know. This is why you want to fear the Lord. Matthew 10 and 28, it says, and the it says, and fear not them which kill the body. Because that's the problem with our people. They fear this man. Oh, this guy's erectable. He been he's been on a four-yard prison. He's done 25 years of life in prison. He's he's a he's a he's a regular he, he regular man just like you. Your, his, his heart is pumping just like yours is. His brain thoughts, he has thoughts just like you do. Alright? Yeah, these people, even to these higher up people. All right, they're 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 human. They're they're fleshly people, man. That's why the scriptures say this, man. Matthew, ten and twenty-eight. 
and fear not them which kill the body. Anybody can kill the body, right? Anybody can kill the body. It says, but are not able to kill the soul, right? Because you, anybody can kill the body, but you can't kill the soul. That's the difference. They can kill the body, but they can't kill the soul. The Lord can kill the body and the soul. Let's get that out. But are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him. Talking about Yahweh Bashima Shai, which is able to destroy both body, right? Both soul and body in hell. So you want to fear the Lord. You want to fear the Lord. All right. You don't want to fear a man because he got he got this amount of rep in the streets. Hey, the Lord can put the death angel on that individual and take him out. Don't matter about that. You know, I'm just using that as an example because, you know, I grew up in around gangs and shit in California and San Bernardino. So it's like, um, you know, I was thinking about that because everybody used to always be like that. Oh, that dude right there. He's from this gang. You know, oh, you know, he's a rectable. He did this. He did that. But he's a he's a he's a man in the flesh. The Lord can send a death angel out there, that individual, take his ass out. You can be buff as shit with all these different warrants and felonies. That don't mean shit. That don't mean nothing. The Lord can still take your ass out of here, man. That's why you want to fear the Lord, not a, a man. All right. The scriptures say not to fear man, to fear the Lord, because the Lord sets that up. You know, you fearing this individual because he do this, do that. The Lord is the one that's putting the spirit on individuals to do the things that they do. Everything is of the Lord. Right, the Lord is in control of good and evil. That's in Proverbs sixteen and uh, I think it's Proverbs sixteen and four, right? And it's also First um, uh, Samuel two and six, and it's also uh, Isaiah forty five six through seven, and it's also Deuteronomy thirty two and thirty nine. It's in the Scriptures. The Lord is the one that's controlling everything. He's in control of good and evil, and also the Book of Job. When you go into Job, I think it's uh, two and nine to verse ten. Right? So the Lord is in control of all things. Satan is in total order, man. You know? So this is why you want to fear the Lord. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It says, let us hear the whole conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Salakia. Fear Yahweh. And how are you going to fear the Lord? Right? Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments where this is the whole duty of man. So that's what you want to do. You want to fear the Lord and you want to keep the commandments, the laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability because you're not going to be able to keep them perfectly. Number one, you in captivity. And number two, you in mortal flesh. You're going to go off. You're going to go off, man. This is why we rehearse the righteous acts, but we mainly have the faith and we fear the Lord. That's why we work out our salvation. The scripture is saying in Philippians 2 and 12, right? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because you, you fear the Lord. That's why you working out. That's why we're working out our salvation. That's why we labor. That's why we go out and teach, right? Because we fear the Lord. We know and understand the protocols, and we know the penalty, right? Behind not doing works, behind not doing what you're supposed to do, what the Lord commands you to do as an Israelite. We know the penalty and the punishment for for not doing those things. We know what will happen. That's why we fear the Lord. Because you don't have assurance of your life. The Lord, you're in the Lord's hands. He can allow anything to happen to you. That's why you want to fear the Lord. I'm not speaking for myself first and foremost in that, man. You don't ever want to rebel against the Lord. He can plague you. You know, I was going to say some words, but he can plague you. You don't want to be plagued by the Lord. You know, that's a scary situation, man. Let me get another precept out. Um, this is Psalms 34 and 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. And let's prove that. This is Psalms 118. We're going to get that out right now. This is Psalms 118. We're going to prove that the saints are the Israelites as well. Because I always quote that scripture. But I don't um, ever go there. Um, it's like it. Let me get it. Um, I just want to get that out for edification's sake. This is Psalms, I think it's 119 or 148. It's like it. It's 148. This is Psalms 148 and 14. It says, He also exalted the horn of his people see who are his people the israelites right it says 
he also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, who are the Israelites. The saints are the Israelites, man. All right. Even of the children, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. So the saints are the Israelites. So that's who it's talking about. When we read these scriptures, that's who it's talking about, man. All right. So now we're going to go back. And we're going to go back to where I was at. Uh, all right, let's get back to that. Salakia, so brothers. Um, so now we know that the saints are the Israelites, right? So now we're going to go to uh, Psalms 34 and 9. This is Psalms 34 and 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, the Israelites. We read that in Psalms 148 and 14. I was thinking Psalms 18, Psalms 118 and 4 or 14, but it's like it. It's Psalms uh, 148 and verse 14. This is Psalms 34 and 9. It says, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. The saints are the Israelites. For there is no want to them that fear him. See, so we want to fear the Lord. We want to do what the Lord command you to do. You want to obey the Lord. All right, you should fear the Lord, man, because, hey, you came into this truth for a reason, and the Lord is the one that set it up, all right? He's the one that ordained it, and let me get that out, all right? And I think that's Jeremiah 2, 1 and 5. Yep, this is Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So the Lord already knew our destiny before we even was even born. He already knew what our lot would be. This is why we pray and hope that we are the elect, right? Because the Lord already called us into this thing. So the main thing is that we're trying to stay on track. You know, we're walking on eggshells. We're trying to work out our salvation individually because even the elders say it's not about you. It's not about any of us, all right? It's about Yahweh Shai. but the main thing is that you want to stay on course and make it to the finish line of that bitter end. That's why these other groups, you got fights breaking out. You got all this other shit going on. Because they don't fear the Lord. The Lord ain't dealing with them. They don't fear the Lord. And they're not following the protocols that are given. Those groups are sold out under the 501c3. So for them, everything is basically up of vainglory. Uh, who has the biggest group? All right. Who has the fanciest garments? That's what these other groups is, is worried about. They're not really worried about, okay, we need to do this to be saved. We need to, you know, fall in line and really examine ourselves, repent, you know, try to get delivered out of here. They're not worried about that. They're worried about here they treat this place as their kingdom you can see it you got guys on a passover dressed like they in the kingdom and shit man they having parties you got these jakes that's claiming to be in the truth they having parties talking about oh this truth is born then then don't be in the truth if you feel the truth is born don't be in the truth go back to christianity you can do whatever you want to do in christianity but one thing you don't want to do is play with the lord in the truth that's why you want to fear the lord because playing with the lord can lead you to be put to death. The Lord can kill you. You can be destroyed doing that. That's why the scriptures say, never tempt the Lord thy power. Because you can be fucking de destroyed playing with the Lord. Excuse my friends. You can be destroyed playing with the Lord, man. You don't You don't want to play with the Lord, man. That's the most scariest thing to do. Play with the Lord. Add to the word. Add to the word. You know, you want to play with the Lord. Add to the word or take away from the word. You don't want to do those things. Come up with your own doctrine which is adding to the word. You don't want to do those things. Those things anger the Lord and he can kill you. You don't want to, you don't want to do that, man. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the wound, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet among, uh, it says a prophet unto the nation. So the Lord already set this up way before we even knew, you know? So this is why it's a blessing. You're called into the truth. But just because you're called, that don't mean that you're the elect. Because it says many are chosen, right? I mean, many are called, but only a few are chosen. And that's why, again, Zechariah 13, 8, not every single Hebrew Israelite is going to be saved. This is why each and every one of us individually are working out our salvation with fear and trembling. We fear the Lord. We're trying to do what the Lord commanded us to do. We're trying to, you know, apply wisdom in every single way, how we carry ourselves, how we bring out the word, how we bring out the scriptures, you know, if we're teaching the correct doctrine. And if you don't, if you're not sure, of, if you're not sure of what you're teaching, don't even upload it because that can put you up as an example. 
So you want to watch everything you do, how you how you are on camera, how you are off camera, behind closed door, because the Lord can bring you out to the light. You don't want that. The Lord can bring you out to the light. You know, so I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. So all these things that I'm talking about, that's the things you should be examining. You know, how you're teaching the truth, how you carry yourself in the truth. Are you being charitable? Are you being there for brothers? Are you really, you know, applying these scriptures like how you do in a video? You know, because anybody can talk, but are you doing the things that you're bringing out? That's that's where it's looked at by the Lord. You know, you're bringing out scriptures, but are you really being the person who you portraying to be on camera? You know, that's something serious, man. Because, look, you may think, I'm just saying, not all brothers is doing this. But you may be, you may be a brother think, you know, you're, you're doing all these things on camera. But brothers can't see what you're doing off camera. The Lord sees what you're doing. You can't hide from the Lord. He sees everything you're doing. And if he see you doing something that is not right, he will bring you out to the light, man. And you don't want that. You don't want that, man. You know, this is why you want to really, I hope you be in the person who you're proclaiming to be on camera, man. That's it. Because the person who you're hiding, it will be brought out to the light. And I got a preset for that. This is Proverbs 16 and, uh, and not 16, yeah, 16, 18, right? This goes into pride, but it also says, it is right here. Get it right here. I don't know why I put six. This is Proverbs 16 and 18. Proverbs 16 and 18, so like you. It said, pride go up before destruction. Con, pride go up before destruction. Look at these groups. There's no order. There's no governing order there. Everybody's out of control. You got guys teaching on other brothers' corners. You got guys that's teaching right next to individuals. Go to a different location. You got guys going up, punching brothers. Like, this is WWE, WCW wrestling, right? This, is, this ain't backyard wrestling, man. You know? All that shit that happened between the ISUPK, IUIC, all that shit was WWE. It looked like a damn wrestling match. What the fuck is that called? A, a, a Royal Rumble match, man, that they used to have back in the day. You know, Mr. Perfect, uh, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, uh, uh, Shawn Michaels, man, uh, uh, Razor Ramon, you know, uh, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, uh, Andre the Giant. That's what it looked like, man. Yokozuna, Doink the Clown. It looked like all that shit, man. But that's how you know that there is no fear in the, there's no fear in the Lord with them groups. They don't fear the Lord, man. Because if you fear the Lord, you you wouldn't you wouldn't do the things you guys would do, wouldn't do the things that you do. You know, I'm just using that as an example. Pride go up before destruction. Pride go up before destruction. So if you're not taking heed to what is given of the scriptures, all right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai, through his prophets, if you're not, you know, taking heed to what is given in the scriptures, you're being prideful, then you're going to be destroyed. Because pride will lead you into destruction. It says, in the haughty spirit before fall, a lot of individuals are being brought out to the light. You got guys that got brought out to the light. All because of the, they, they let their emotions, they let certain things get to them. You know, this is why I, I pray. You know, I pray. I really pray. You know, all the time I pray, man. You know, I even pray for brothers out there. A lot of brothers, man. Because Satan is out. The angelic Satan, he's out to, to tip you, right? The script, let me get that out, man. Let me get that scripture out, man. This is uh, Peter 5 and 8. Yep. This is Proverbs. This, I mean Proverbs. This is 1 Peter 5 and 8. So like it. 1 Peter 5 and 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, right, as a warring lion, walketh about, seeking who he may devour. See, because when you're at camp, just for an example, when, when you're at camp, you're together, together with the brethren, you're good and all that. But Satan really likes to get you, where he likes to try you at, is when you're by yourself. That's where Satan tries to fuck with you and attack you at, man. He'll try to fuck with your mind, right? And Satan loved doing that. He love fucking with our minds. Have all these different thoughts going into your head. All you, you know, you next you know you're feeling uh, low. Then you got the finance demon, you got the anxiety demon, right? 
You got you got the fucking paralysis demon on you, right? You got the agoraphobic de demon on you, or sometimes you just in the daytime just feel vexed for no reason. You or you feel anxious, like frightened for no reason. I had a feeling like that one day. I just got up and I was just feeling scared for no for no reason. But this is why, again, this is why we need the Lord. This is why we need prayer. This is why we need to follow the instructions of the Lord and apply the scriptures to our spiritual walk on a daily basis of our lives. Because other than that, we will be bugged out out here. If it wasn't for the mercy of the Lord, yes, we will be bugged out out here, man. Nobody in this world gives a fuck about you. No one gives a fuck about us here, man. But Yahweh Bashi Mashai. People may tell you they give a fuck about you. People don't give a fuck about you, man. They don't give a fuck about us, man. You know? But, hey, but this is why we got the Lord. This is why we got the scriptures to get us through in these times, man. This is why we have the Lord to get us through in these times. Because other than that, if we didn't have Yahweh Bashi Mashai, these holy scriptures, this, this truth, all of us would be fucked up right now. Most of us probably wouldn't even be living right now, man. We'll be fucked up, man. Probably already killed. You know, are in prison right now because of the torments and trials and tribulations that we that we deal with on a daily basis. But see, through the through the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bashimashai, He's getting us through on a daily basis, man. Whether it's at work, whether it's with your woman, right? Whether it's with your bills, the Lord is getting us through on these daily basis, man. People doing you wrong. People stealing from you. You call people your brother thinking they, they're your brother and they really not your fucking brother. They talking shit about you. You know? You even got family members getting you stirred up into some fucking shit, man. But this is why we have the truth. This is why we got the scriptures, man. This is why we have Yahweh Bashi Mashai and we have the men that are set up to guide us because those men are experienced. Because if you don't have no one over you, no one experience over you to tell you, look, this is wrong, that is wrong, you're going to be fucked up in the truth. If you don't have no one over rebuking you, you're going to be fucked up in the truth, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm really speaking from the spirit. If it wasn't for brothers rebuking me, I would be fucked up right now. I would not be in the truth right now, man. It's all through the mercy and blessing of the Lord, Yahweh Shemashai, speaking through those individuals. And so like you for the rambling, but it's the truth, man. Because hey, the angelic Satan is out for each and every one of us, man. We, he knows that our salvation is near. So temptation is going to really increase. It's going to fucking increase. Excuse my French. It's really going to increase, man. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant because of your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking who he may devour. And that's what Satan does. You know, the Lord sends Satan to mess with you when you're by yourself. It can happen at camp. I'm not saying it can't. It can happen anywhere. But Satan really loves to get you the most is when you're by yourself. That's when he loves to fuck with you. You know? But hey, this is why we got to pray. This is why we got to seek the Lord. We got to, why how about you, Shai? You know, blessing us to live another day, man. Because every day is your last day. You don't know when your time is up. None of us know when our times is up, man. We're just living each day as it's our last. But, hey, we're given mercy by the Lord, man. He's given us mercy. And that's the blessing, man. And let me get that out. You know, I'm just moving around through the scriptures, brother, through the spirit. You know, whatever the Lord just puts on me through the spirit, I'll just get out. Let's get out that Psalm 6, man. Because I had one of my guys read this because he was going through shit. So I had him. I gave him assignment. I told him to read Psalm 6 and read Psalms 51. <laughs> Good luck, you brothers. I told him to read Psalm 6 and Psalms 51. Because I read that. I read that, that chapter almost every day. When I Before I go to work, I read that chapter. When I get up in the morning, I read that chapter. When I go to bed, I read that chapter. This is Psalm 6. It says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. And this is what David prayed on to the Lord about. He asked the Lord for mercy in the times of trouble. Yes, David did. King David, man. Right? It says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. So this is why you want to ask the Lord for mercy. This is why you want to fear the Lord. 
This is why you want to ask the Lord for mercy. This is why you want to examine yourself. You want to work on yourself as an Israelite individually. You want to work on yourself. You know, because you can't tell, brother, you got to do this, you got to do that, and then you're not doing it. Because now that makes you a hypocrite. You're, 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 uh, I'm going to say what my uncle Clarence used to say, you're perpetrating the fraud, man. That's what you're doing. You're perpetrating the fraud, man. That's what you're doing. You're perpetrating the fraud, man. So you want to really be the person who you claiming to be on camera, man. That's the main thing. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. And that word vexed, it means to be afraid or to tremble or to be anxious, man. Worried. Troubled, feeling troubled, feeling angry, man. Right? It says, it says, um, it's like I went down. Verse 3, it says, My soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul and save me for thy mercy's sake. So David is asking the Lord for mercy. That's why he's supposed to be praising, praying, 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 praying to the Lord, so like it, and asking him for mercy. Just because you're in a camp, that don't mean the Lord is going to automatically have mercy to you. And just because you know you're Hebrew, Israelite, that doesn't mean the Lord is going to automatically have mercy on you. You got to pray to the Lord and ask the Lord for mercy, man. Because he don't have to give us no type of mercy whatsoever. The Lord don't have to do shit. He don't have to do nothing, man. If the Lord don't want to give mercy on you, he don't fucking have to. This is why you got to humble yourself, man. You got to examine yourself. You got to fear the Lord. It's easy to read a Bible. It's easy to put on a garment. And to, to, to turn the camera on and to say all these things, right? But are you really that person who you are on camera on? And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost because this is, is this truth is no fucking joke. It's it's not a, a game. I don't know for other individuals. It's to, to, for me as a person, as me being a truth, the truth is not a game. I don't I don't fucking play with the truth. I don't just be around brothers just to be around brothers. I don't just teach the truth for clout. I don't do any of that shit. Everything that I do in my videos, I really really mean. If I can give you my mind and you can be able to see what I'm what I'm thinking, you will know. If I can give you everything within my mind, you can see my vision of how I am in the inside. You will say, "Damn, that brother, yeah, I'm serious when it comes to the truth. I don't I don't fucking play around with the truth. I don't take this shit as a joke. I don't know for other people, but I take this truth serious, man, because I really fear the Lord. I understand the re I know the reasons why I'm in the truth. This is why I ask a lot of individuals when they don't do works or when they just you know, sit around and play around. What are you in the truth for? And I always get out of individuals of salvation, but you're not working out your salvation because you're not doing the works. Works and showing something, doing works and showing something shows your, uh, your, your worthiness. It shows you worthy. It shows you to be sincere. It shows you to be a brother. And it shows you that you really fear the Lord. Because if you don't do the works, you don't fear the Lord. You don't. Because if you did, you would do it. You wouldn't give a fuck about anybody or what they say or what they think about you. That's the problem with a lot of individuals. They're worried about other people. Don't worry about other people. Like the elders say, worry about your own fucking crown. Worry about you. Worry about yourself. Stop worrying about this individual over here, what he's doing or what he's thinking about you. Stop worrying about this person over here. Fuck them. Worry about the Lord, man. The only person you need to be worried about is the truth, the Lord. Because he holds your life in his hands. And if he wants to fucking squish this shit and say, go and smite that individual, because the Lord can do that. He can send the death angel after you. He can say, go and smite you. And you can be fucking smited by the Lord. You can get a plague put on you. This is why you want to fear the Lord, man. That's why David, when he prayed to the Lord, he asked the Lord for mercy. It says, for in death, there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave, who shall give thee thanks? I am weary and my groanings all the night make my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. Verse 7. My eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all my enemies. And David had a lot of enemies. He had a lot of enemies. You know? Just for like us in this present time, we have a lot of enemies. Two-thirds of our people are, 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 are our enemies because they're not in the truth. If you're not in the truth, you are considered an enemy. If you don't believe in the truth, you are our enemy. Yeah, if you're an Israelite, a so-called Negro Spanish Native American, and you're rebelling against the truth, you're against the truth, you're calling us Power Rangers in outfits and wearing dresses and being a scoffer, you're an enemy to the Lord, so you're definitely an enemy to us. And the Lord is going to fucking kill your ass if you don't repent. He's going to destroy you, man. And people just keep thinking, oh, they just there, they just talking, they did the year 2000 prophecy, nothing happened. Yep, you're just like in the time of Noah. 
But when this place falls apart and you're trying to seek the Lord, it's going to be too late because your ass was seducive of your own goddamn mindset. And that is going to cause you to be put to death, man. That is what's going to cause you to be put to death. Verse 8. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord have heard the voice of my reaping. And the word reaping means uh, uh, cry. All right. And let me get that precept out what the Lord said. Let's get the precept what the Lord said. And the precept was, um, you are not worthy of me. Right? Let me get that word, uh, precept out. It's Matthew 7 and 23. Yep. This is what Yahweh I said. Matthew 7 and 23. And when I will profess unto him, I never knew you. And actually, let me go back. Let me go back, man. We're going to go back. This is Matthew 7 and 22, 22. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Because you got a lot of Israelites out here that's portraying to be men of the Lord. They claiming to speak in, in the Lord's name, but they're not teaching the word in truth and sincerity. They're not doing the wills of the, they're not doing the will of the Lord. They're not working out their salvation. They're not doing that, right? They're not doing any of that, right? And if they are speaking in the name of the Lord, name of the Lord they're doing it for vainglory purposes. They're prophesying and going off of the scriptures. They're not doing things or in order, man. It says, have, it says, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? It says, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And this is what the Lord's going to say. And then it says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And that's what's going to be the end judgment for a lot of you two-thirds out there, man. It's going to be a lot of judgment cast upon you guys, man. Lord is going to mess you guys up, man. This is why you want to fear the Lord. This is why you want to uh, repent, right? That's why the Lord said re repent. Let's get that out. Let's get out that Acts 3 and 19. It's Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, right? It says, repent ye therefore and be converted. That word converted means to return or come back, right? It says that your sins may be blotted out. Your sins may be blotted out, right? Forgiven, right? It says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. See? So this is why you want to repent. This is why you want to examine yourself. That's why scriptures say, tarry not to turn to the Lord. This is why you don't want to play with the Lord. You don't want to add to his word. You don't want to take away from the word. You don't want to be a scoffer. You don't want to be none of those things because that is going to be held against you when the Lord come back. And he is going to destroy you, you know? But hey, man, I'm going to wrap it up with that. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Yahweh Kachodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the old for the leg. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Mashiach, Arazaka, from the servants of Yahweh, Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada Branch. And Lord willingness, that's was edifying. So, hey, man, fear the Lord, repent, pray without ceasing, examining yourself, fix yourself, exhortation, man. Do all these things the best to your ability. You are working out your own salvation, and you are at a spiritual war with yourself. Yeah, you're in a spiritual war with yourself, man. So, Lord willingness, that's was edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom, a ball, a ball. Shalom to Wabi Wam. Shalom to Wabawa Kla. Shalom.